Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second week of ALS One. That's your first year listening class, Academic Listening Strategies One. Um, if you haven't seen week one already, which uh, was your orientation class, explaining a lot about the class and how we're going to teach them this year, um, you should watch that video first. Okay, read everything you can about it on um, on my talk. And uh, you're on you're on the camera. <laughs> That's my seven year old daughter. Um, anyway, if you don't know me, uh, my name is John Racine, and I'm one of the teachers here in the Zenkadi English program. Okay. Um, before we get started, there's a couple things you have to know. For example, this is the textbook for this particular video. Okay. You're probably, most of you are using Pathways, but this one is Pathways 2, and it's the second edition of Pathways 2. Okay, it's got the winding road, okay, with a car on it. Looks like a great place to drive. So if you were assigned this for your class, um, then this is the video you should be watching, not some other one, okay? Um, also, something else you're gonna need right now is you have to have my doc open because you're going to need that um, to do the listening sections and um, other activities like that. Okay, so basically you need your textbook, or if you don't have the textbook yet, that's okay. But you will need something um, the first unit, the first part of the first unit you will need because we're going to be using that today. And you can download that from my doc if you haven't already. Okay, so let's get started with the textbook. Um, take a look at page one. Okay, unit one, page one. It says at the top, healthy lives. Could be a good topic. We're going to find out if it's good or not. And you can see on page one, if you have it open already, that there is a lady and she's doing something. What is she doing? <laughs> Don't tell them the answer. They're got to think about that for themselves, okay? Um, yes, yeah, some of you might have said that she's running. Okay, so what is the woman doing? She's running. <laughs> Mocha. <laughs> Uh, my my lovely daughter Mocha shouldn't be in here when I'm recording this because we want you to think in English as much as you can and not take the answers from another English speaker. Okay, so yeah, we could say she's jogging. We could say that she's running. We could say she's climbing the stairs. Okay, or more generally, we could just say she's exercising. Right, she's getting her exercise. And why is she doing this? What do you think? Why would she be doing that? Is she in a hurry? Um, is she being followed by a monster or something? I don't think so. Maybe you think um, she's trying to stay healthy or to stay fit. Same meaning, right? To stay healthy or to stay fit. Um, or if you were really specific about it, you might say that she's trying to build muscles or to burn calories. Okay, let's take a look at page two and three. Um, living a long, healthy life. Okay. Um, you see the stop sign there. That means I'm going to ask you to stop the video for a minute and read pages two and three of the textbook. Okay. Anytime you see the stop sign, you know, you've got some activity to do either listening or something in the textbook. So in this case, it's reading pages two and three of the textbook and answer these two questions. Okay. What do these four countries, these four places in the pictures have in common? What do you think? How many of the tips, okay, there are tips for living a long, healthy life. How many of the tips for living a long, happy life do you practice? Okay, think about it. Turn off the video now and do the reading and thinking, and then we'll talk about it more in just a minute. Okay, we're back. I hope you had time to uh, read it and think about it and come up with an answer. Um, the first question I wanted to know was, what do these four countries have in common? Okay, we've got um, the Nicoya, I think it's pronounced, peninsula in Costa Rica. 
We have Sardinia, uh, which I believe is an island in Italy. Okinawa, Japan, there's another island you know very well. And Ikaria in Greece, okay? What do these four countries have in common? Well, judging by the people in, <laughs> in the photos, um, and by reading it right there on the page, um, this map is showing us that there are places around the world where an unusually high percentage of the population is 100 years old or older, okay? So basically it means there's a lot of very old people in these places. And a lot of scientists, um, a lot of doctors and people wonder why, okay? They're trying to figure that out still. Why do they live so long in those places? Okay. So maybe it's a combination of these tips, right? So how many of the tips for living a long, happy life do you practice? It's a great list of things, very, very healthy, okay? Healthy diet, exercise, do you get enough sleep? Do you spend time with your friends and family? Um, do you think positively? And are you grateful? That's an interesting one, okay? Um, it's kind of the psychological part, right? What goes on in your mind? If you're happy about what you have and you're uh, glad for what you, you get, then um, you're grateful, right? Grateful is like being thankful for something. Um, do you know how to manage stress? Um, and you shouldn't smoke, okay? That's like, that should be obvious to everybody right now that smoking is terrible, terrible for your health. Okay, let's move along. Lesson A, vocabulary. This is the vocabulary section on page four. You can see the stop sign, so you know I'm gonna ask you to stop for a minute. Mukha, please don't, <laughs> don't, um, anyway, let's continue. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask you to stop in a second. It says read the textbook, so read part A, and then listen to track 1.2 on my doc. Okay, so you have to have my doc open, like I said. So, um, First you can go through and read it, um, then you can do part B by listening, and after that, try the exercise in part C, okay? See if you know those words. Uh, it's okay to use a dictionary, take your time, see if you can get them all right, and um, stop the video here and give it a try. Okay, we're back. I hope you had a chance to do that. Um, let's take a look at the answers, okay? Page four, part C. Number one, stress. That's the difficulty in life that makes you worried, okay? Um, it's kind of an interesting word because we use it two different ways. Sometimes we talk about the difficulty as the stress, and sometimes we talk about that feeling we have about the difficulty as stress. So we feel stress because there is stress around us, right? There are things that make us stressed. Number two, consists of, okay? That's the same thing is made up of, okay? Um, books are, books consist of paper, books, um, the writing in books consists of ideas, right? It's made up of ideas. Number three, are likely, are probably going to, okay? It's probably going to rain today, it's likely to rain today, something like that. Number four, habits are things that you do often or regularly, okay? We talk about bad habits like smoking. Hopefully you don't smoke, okay? That's a bad habit. Number five, diseases are illnesses, okay? Pretty much the same thing. Sometimes we call it sickness, okay? Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to have an illness. Nobody wants to have a disease page four, part C, number six, cause, to make something happen, okay? This word's very useful because we often use it as a noun as well as a verb, okay? Sometimes we talk about there are many causes of unemployment, for example. There are many causes for the poor economy, okay? Um, but in this case, we're talking about as a verb, something causes something to happen, right? Um, number seven, provides. It's to give something or to make it available, right? Um, the government provides us with help if we're in big, big trouble, okay? Number eight, prevent. is to stop something from happening. 
um, kind of an important word right now, right? Okay, people are trying to prevent the spread of coronavirus by wearing masks and staying two, uh, two meters away from each other, right? And washing their hands. Thank you, Mocha. Um, number nine, diet, the foods you eat regularly. Okay, keep in mind that this kind of diet is different from the expression, I'm going on a diet. So that kind of diet um, is something you do to, for example, uh, lose weight or something like that. Or if, you're, or if you're in training, trying to build muscle, maybe um, you're on a special diet for that. But another meaning of diet is just the foods that you eat regularly. So we talk about the Japanese diet is often fish and miso soup and rice. Yeah, really. Number 10, attitude, a feeling about something uh, or someone, okay? Um, if, mm, this word is another one that kind of has a mixed meaning to it, okay? I think it's, it's actually the feeling we have towards, um, towards something, okay? Or the, the way we act towards something. So at, on the one hand, it's the feeling we have, Oh, that, that kid hates school. He doesn't want to go to school. He's got a bad attitude about school. Um, and he shows it, right? And he shows it through his attitude, okay? The way he expresses himself about school, for example. Okay, so it's the feeling we have and the way we react towards something or someone. Okay, part five, or page five, part D. Um, try the exercise, okay? Stop the video right now and give it a try. Okay, I hope you had time to answer those questions in uh, part D on page five. Let's check the answers. Number one, in Okinawa, good food and healthy habits may prevent health problems. Okay, it may help to stop those kind of health problems. Um, and that's why they live so long in Okinawa, right? Um, I think they have more hundred year olds than anywhere else in the world, maybe. Okay, many, many hundred year old people. Yes, really, yes. Um, my father, number two, my father always thinks he's going to get sick, but I have a more positive attitude. I tell myself, I'm going to stay healthy. Okay, that's her attitude towards health, right? She says she's going to stay healthy. She has a positive attitude. Number three, my grandmother is 90 and very healthy. I think she is likely to live to 100. Okay, she will probably live to 100. Number four, Ed has a lot of stress in his life right now. I think he needs to relax more. Okay, lots going on in Ed's life. Number five, a healthy lifestyle consists of good food, regular exercise, plenty of sleep, and time with your family and friends. Um, yeah, it consists of um, a healthy lifestyle is made up of these things. Okay, same meaning. Number six, the typical Sardinian diet, right, from Italy, the typical Sardinian diet includes a lot of fish and fresh vegetables. Maybe that's why they live so long in Sardinia. Number seven, eating too many burgers can cause health problems. Okay, yeah, definitely. Avoid McDonald's if you can. Number eight, smoking is a very bad habit. You should quit, okay, it's something you do a lot. Um, number nine, today a lot of people in the United States suffer from heart disease. It's a very common illness, okay, heart disease. Um, people have heart attacks, people have other medical problems about their heart. That's disease, right, illness. Number 10, grandchildren can provide comfort and happiness to their grandparents. Okay, provide, they give it to them, right? Okay, I hope you had no problem with those words. If you know them well, the listening will be easy when we come to that. Um, here's a good question. You can try this questionnaire in part F on page five, um, just for fun, okay? Um, if you want to do it, you could stop the video here. I didn't put the stop sign because it's not necessary. You don't have to do part F if you don't want to, but you can try. Just answer the questions. 
If you answer yes to every one of them, well, maybe you'll live to be 100. We'll see. I hope you do. I hope you have a great life. Okay, I'm going to move along, but you can stop the video here if you want to try part F. Okay, listening on page six. Okay, I'm going to ask you to stop and do the listening, but um, first let's take a look at this page. It says, listen to track 1.3 on my doc and try the true or false questions in part A. Okay, correct the false statements. So if you think it's false, write the correct sentence. Okay, correct the sentence. Okay, stop the video now and give it a try. Okay, I hope you had a chance to listen to the, the audio. Again, all of those tracks are on my doc. If you haven't figured that out yet, you're probably in trouble. Okay, let's take a look. Number one, uh, true, public health nurses take care of one person at a time. That's true. Um, okay, that's funny. That's not what I was expecting, but yes, it's true. Okay, number two, True, public health nurses take care of whole communities of people. Okay. Um, actually, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if the first one was false or if, they, um, or if they're both true. Sometimes a public health nurse takes care of one person at a time. Um, I think you should check that, okay? I'm not really sure myself. I haven't done the listening in a while, um, but you can check that just to make sure. Maybe it's false and then true. I know number two is true. Number three, public health nurses sometimes do their job by visiting companies. That's true, okay? Sometimes they're visiting companies. And number four, tonight's talk will mostly be about um, the work of public health nurses. That's false. Tonight's talk will mostly be about heart disease and how to prevent it, okay? Hopefully you, you made a correction, something like that. It doesn't have to be exactly like that, but somehow, okay? Let's move along. Page six, part B. Check the topics that you think you will hear in the talk about preventing heart disease. Okay, it's just the ones you think you will hear about, okay? Um, there's no right or wrong answer, it's just what do you think, okay? And after you're finished, listen to track 1.4 and check to see which topics were mentioned, okay? So first you guess what you think you will hear about, then listen, Listen as many times as you like and check to see which topics were mentioned, okay? And then you can start the video again after that. Please stop it now. Okay, hopefully you had the chance to make your guesses and then to uh, check which ones you heard. These are the ones that she mentioned. I hope you caught them all. Okay, she talked about attitude, she talked about blood pressure, she talked about diet and exercise and smoking and stress. So the only one she didn't talk about was social life. Um, if you guessed that one too, don't worry about it. It's a good idea, right? Because we talked about how friends and family are important to keeping our stress down and keeping our health in good shape. So um, yeah, no right or wrong answers there. If you caught all of those, that's great. And uh, let's move along. Yeah, social life was the one that wasn't mentioned, but it could have been. Uh, page six, part C. Um, let's read this part together. Um, the listening skill, uh, listening for main ideas, it's in the blue box at the bottom of the page. Um, let's try that now. Uh oh, what happened here? Okay. Um, Okay, well, anyway, let's read. Um, listening skill, listening for main ideas. When listening to a talk, you need to be able to identify the main ideas. The main ideas are the speaker's most important ideas or what the talk is about. Here are some techniques you can use to help you identify main ideas. Um, probably the most important thing you've got to get when you're listening. You start with the main ideas, later you can get the details, right? So first point, listen carefully to the beginning of a talk. Most speakers will mention the main idea in their introduction. Um, yeah, almost always. 
Um, sorry, I can't uh, change this for a second, but um, I wanted to show this and reduce that. Ah, I know, what if I, uh, hold on a second. Sorry about this. Um, it's gonna be rough for a few weeks because we're not used to teaching this way. And we're not used to the technology yet, so. But she is. <laughs> Good thing she's here to help, right? Okay. Um, okay, well, it, again, doesn't matter. But it says, listen carefully to the beginning of the talk. Most speakers will mention the main idea in their introduction. And it's so true, right? Whether you're studying English or you're studying German or you're studying French or you're studying uh, some topic in Japanese, almost every teacher walks into class and says, good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about something. Nantoka, right? <laughs> something, okay? Um, when you hear that, you know that the topic is coming up, right? It's very simple English, right? Um, today, we're going to talk about Okay, if you catch that, you know the important thing is coming up next, right? One of the main ideas. Um, the next point is listen for repetition. Speakers often repeat keywords and phrases to emphasize their main ideas, okay? If I start repeating myself, maybe I forgot what I said, but probably I'm telling you that it's important, okay? It's important. Like having a healthy lunch. Yeah, that's important too. Um, Okay, so um, anyway, that's good, good to remember when you're doing your listening. Let's, um, okay, next, listen to track 1.4 again and answer the questions in part D. So please stop the video here and try part D. Okay. 